Lafayette facing Buck now in their second of a three-game homestand on Saturday. The Leopards looking to stay perfect in conference play and coming out strong, making Buck now go three and out and taking advantage of the good field position from the punt. It will take only three plays. DeAndre Morrow will complete the pass, get them to the one-yard line, and Jeff Cumming will run it in, putting the Leopards on the board their first possession four minutes in. The Leopards will force Bucknell to punt on every possession, getting two sacks in the first quarter. Second quarter, both defenses doing their jobs until less than five minutes when Lafayette will drive, get within scoring position, then a bad snap will cost them 19 yards. They will attempt a field goal almost 45 yards out, but it will bear just left, and Bucknell will use that to their advantage, drive it down the field, and get the TD to end the half. Lafayette could not make it a two-possession game to end the half, and with the missed field goal, the momentum shifted to Bucknell's favor, where they took advantage and scored with 14 seconds to tie the game. Now the Leopards have to come out strong this half, or they could get dealt their first loss in conference play. Starting the third quarter, the seam as the first. They will drive down, and Michael Bolton will put them back on top, 14-7. The Bison will try to do the same thing, but Brandon Ellis will ruin that idea, intercepting the ball in their own 18, and the interception will turn into another touchdown for the Leopards. Jeff Cumming will rush it in for his second of the day after Mitchell Bennett gets them to the two-yard line on the previous play. The third quarter will end with the Leopards driving, and in the fourth, Rob Curley will find wide receiver Mitchell Bennett in the back of the end zone to extend their lead to three touchdowns. The Leopards will seal the deal, getting one more touchdown on the day, ending it 35-14. Well, we knew Bucknell would come in all fired up. They needed a win, obviously, to stay in it, and they're a good football team. Their record may not reflect as such, but they're a good, hard-nosed football team, well-coached. Uh, we come out and uh, maybe didn't play as well as we uh, certainly are capable of in the first half, but you got to give credit to them for that. Can't always say that we're playing bad and they're not. They're playing good. So um, now certainly pleased with the second half. We wanted to come out and establish ourselves, particularly on the ground game, put some points on the board, and certainly make it a different second half. Well, I think in the end, you know, we put everything together. I think we had a slow start to begin with, you know, and they're a tough team as always. They have a, you know, really dangerous offense. I think we did well to start and uh, finished off uh, pretty strong. I think it was good. We made some big plays. They certainly made some big plays. Overall, it was a good game. I went in, and it was pretty loud in there. I calmed them down immediately while the coaches are making their own adjustments. And then I uh, talked to the kids, and I said, look, everybody calm down right now. No panic. No need to panic. 7-7. Seven, seven, we got a half football to play, and we got to focus on us, not on what they're doing, on what we're doing and how we need to play. So, um, you know, certainly I think we were able to do that. It's basically just trying to play our game. You know, we weren't uh, trying to adjust to them. We really wanted to. Um, get aggressive in, and we weren't the first half. How did you prepare for this week for their spread option offense? Well, it's difficult to do. You do as best you can. You can never simulate the actual game speed until you get to the game, and they were pretty effective. Now, no excuses, but we had some people missing with the flu and everything, which certainly makes a difference for us. On the scene from Fisher Stadium, I'm Eric Rose.